all season, one team has been waiting for this. How do you approach a championship when you're on the verge of a dynasty? Three-time defending champion Georgia is ready to seal their name in history as the second team to win four championships in a row. Every champion has to fight their way to a title, but Georgia is a team others want to beat more than most. No one wants to endure the smothering presence of a dynasty. Utah knows what it's like to have history on their side and are ready for the adulation of the winner's circle once again. There's no love lost between the Gym Dogs and their main SEC rival, Alabama. Four times? Not if they can help it. And banging on the door of a title, Florida would be quite pleased to steal it away from Georgia at home. They won it. They assume it. Today, they have to claim it. Welcome to Athens, Georgia. We're at Stegman Coliseum for the 2008 NCAA Gymnastics Championships. Today, six teams with elite gymnasts will compete for a title. And for the home team, a chance to cement their place as one of the best ever. Again, everybody, I'm Tim Brando. You know, since mid-September, when practice began, 64 Division I teams dreamed of having an opportunity to make it to the Super Six. Dual meets in January gave way to conference championships in March, and then came the regionals in April. Now, a half dozen have their eyes on the prize. For the first time in SEC history, four schools have made it to the Super Six. You already know of the Georgia dynasty. Alabama's a perennial power with four national titles in their pocket. Last year's number one, Florida's the upstart, chomping at the bit for their first national title. At long last, LSU is a party crasher after 20 years of falling short in the preliminaries. Stanford is the lone representative from a very solid Pac-10, and Utah's unquestioned national reputation remains intact after finishing second in this championship just a year ago. Once again, I'm joined by the 1996 Olympic gold medal team captain, Amanda Borden. And Amanda, as formidable as this competition appears on paper, I think we'd both be shocked if Suzanne Yachtman's team lost on this floor. Well, she has created a true dynasty in the 25 years she's been here, as well as a very loud gym dog fan base as they go for their fourth straight national championship. A bit of a scare midway through the season as they lost Courtney Coupets opening the door for other teams. However, there were two gym dogs that had something to say about that, Katie Heenan and Tiffany Tolney, who led the gym dogs to being ranked number one. But what makes them so tough to beat is that they have the depth from top to bottom, including their freshmen and their walk-ons who will be in the lineup for the finals. All right, this Florida team has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with them the last couple of years. They're young, they're brash, they're confident. Well, they were ranked number one last year and they weren't able to pull it out when it counted. This year, Coach Rhonda Fain has a different approach, making sure her team peaks when it counts. Amanda Castillo and Melanie Sinclair had phenomenal prelims performances, but along with the big scores, they bring attitude, confidence, <laughs> and energy, a package that I truly feel yeah. will help the Gators give a run for their money to the Gym Dogs. As great as Georgia is, Utah's already got nine national championships. They're here again, lurking, flying under the radar. I think they're comfortable in that role. You know, Utah has a quiet confidence. They're led by senior Ashley Postel. She's the number one all-arounder coming into this competition. And although they don't stand out on one single event, they post solid scores across the board on all four events. Their confidence will be tested out of the gate as they start on what I believe is the most difficult event to start on, the balance beam. And while Utah begins there in rotation one, Alabama will be on vault, Florida the bars. Georgia begins at a very comfortable spot in floor exercise. LSU and Stanford have buys in the first rotation. Each team will have six competitors on each apparatus with the lowest score thrown out. There's Sarah Patterson, 
in her 30th year at the Capstone and was the last coach to win a national title in her home building, claiming the Tide's fourth title in 2002. First up on the vault, sophomore Casey Overton from Virginia Beach, Virginia. She's performing near Chanko full. We're going to see it all day long. Very nice. It's going to come down to height and landing. Solid ball. She's very satisfied with it. And the score is 9.850. Well, we spoke of Utah and their great tradition. Greg Marsden actually owns a title outside of the NCAA back in the old AIAW days. So they, they and their brochures will say they've got 10 of them. But there are nine NCAA titles in his hip pocket. And here is Jamie Dijkstrick. Sophomore leads off on both the beam and the bars. We mentioned very difficult event to start out on. You've got a lot of adrenaline. Round off layout. Little balance check. On top of the fact that George is on floor, there's a very loud crowd in the background. Beautiful front aerial. She made the Dean's List this year, 4.0 in the spring semester, so solid in the classroom as well. This is one of Jamie's best events. She was the 02 and 04 Junior Olympic Balance Beam Champion. Dismounting with a gainer full, solid landing, and a very solid start for Utah. Greg Marsden always understands the importance of getting out to a good start and always a quality contingent from Salt Lake to support their team. They were at home a year ago, 9.725 for Jamie. Over to the bars now, Miranda Smith. A UCLA transfer sat out the 2006 season after going to junior college. Starting right out with the release move up to the high bar. Uh -oh. oh. Oh. Right away, this puts Rhonda Fain's team up against the wall on this very difficult apparatus to start with. Wow. And Tim, she has to repeat the exact same release move again. She didn't have enough height and distance. So let's see right here. There she is. Obviously, being first in the lineup, they're hoping to drop this score. Yeah, the heat is on now, no question. She transferred from UCLA after an injury forced her out her final season there, but she was a solid contributor for the Bruins before transferring. And a beautiful dismount, double front, perfect landing. We'll wait and see who can pick her up. Only a 9.250. Well, there's Suzanne Yachlin. And she eagerly awaits the performance of Abby Stagg in Flores. Abby's getting ready for her second tumbling pass. Very nice double foot punch front. Strong landing. Her teammates and Suzanne describe her as nonstop energy, like she's plugged into the wall. So when hearing this robotic music, she said, it's perfect for me. How good is Georgia? She didn't even compete a year ago. <laughs> How good are they? One tumbling pass to go. Remember, these routines are a minute and a half. Doesn't seem long, but it takes a tremendous amount of endurance. Double pike, little bounce on the landing. <laughs> yeah, there's that energy. It ran out. Uh, it finally ran out on Abby Stack. And another one of many standing ovations we'll be seeing here at Stegman Coliseum. Abby score 9.850. The NCAA Gymnastics Championships are underway in Athens. CBS Sports presentation of the NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championships is sponsored by the new AT&T. Your world delivered. Lowe's, for all your home improvement needs. Lowe's, let's build something together. And by Enterprise Rent-A-Car, we'll pick you up. It's been an incredible journey for Alabama's Sarah Patterson. 30 years at the Capstone, her 14th Super 6, four national titles at Alabama. Most people don't get the opportunity to be a head coach when they're 22. 
sport has grown tremendously and I remember starting off with, with no one in the stands and now here we get have the opportunity to compete in front of 15,000 people at home. And I just think that uh, there's a lot of hard, hard work, a lot of people that have contributed to the success of our sport and I'd like to see that uh, continue even more over the next 15 years. You could say that this sport lends itself to long tenure for head coaches. Greg Marsden in his 33rd season. Dee Dee Bro is the only coach LSU has ever known at this event. Now in her 31st season to go along with Yachlin in her silver anniversary year. Cassie Price actually replaced Caitlin White after the warm-ups today and will lead off on vault. She's doing a Yurchenko Arabian. It's a blind land and can't see the ground. Very nice little hop. It's a tough vault. Yeah, it is. There's her dad, Paul. He's pretty happy holding up the sign with his daughter's name. And look at that, a 9.775 for Cassie Price. Now we go over to the bars in Florida's Corey Hartung. Talk about an elite gymnast. She is that. She's beautiful on this event. She's great toe point and line, starting out with a stalder. Right to the shoot over. Corey's capable of huge scores on all four events. Another beautiful release move. You don't see her break form ever. Winding up for the dismount. Full twisting double back, little hop, but great, great routine. And Amanda, they're gonna need more scores like that or better to pick up Miranda Smith after her early fall. 9.80 will help get the job done for Ronda Fane's squad. Now let's quickly jump over to the beam where Nina Kim is already underway. Tumbling series, backhand spring layout, step out. The equipment is on a podium. This is the only event that it actually makes it a little tougher. It does add a little bounce and even a wobble to the balance beam. Well, you can hear the Georgia crowd responding to the floor X, and it's just amazing how she's able to keep her concentration on this apparatus. Switch side leap, very solid. Showing great flexibility and control. There's really never a moment where it's silent in no. this arena. Getting ready for a dismount. Round off one and a half. Very nice routine. You'd say that's solid, wouldn't you? Very, very nice. She has to feel good about that, and so does Coach Marston. That's really what this team is all about. 9.850 in every category. They're just quite good. Earlier, while Nina was on the beam, this was what was happening that caused all of the commotion. Tiffany Tolnay's floor exercise with the help of the Charlie Daniels band. Well, that was a beautiful second tumbling pass. These gym dogs know that they need to perform, but what it comes down to are those clean landings. They don't give a deduction away. And you can see her having a blast. Tim, there is nothing like performing on this event in front of your hometown crowd. In many respects, too, Amanda, don't you think it's the perfect storm? You're at home, you get to start out with Floor X. Oh, great way to start the competition. Got a lot of energy, and they're wonderful on this event. Gets their momentum going as they approach the next three events. One tumbling pass to go. Finishing with a beautiful double pike, and there again is that perfect landing. Giving nothing. Little two-step to close it out for Tiffany Tolnay. Her performance, there's her dad, Cotton. He always loves to video her. She helped cinch the deal a year ago in Utah with her performance. High fives around with a 9.90 for Tiffany Tolnay. And one of the superstars of this event, Amanda Castillo, and she's going to need that kind of performance to pick up her team after the Miranda Smith fall earlier. She's very dynamic on this event. Opening with a beautiful Jaeger. Right to a Tukachev the other way. Shoots a hand a little short there. All she has left is the dismount. 
short again on that handstand. Tim, it looks like she's feeling the pressure. And a hop on the dismount. That's not Amanda's best bar routine. Ronda Fane's club probably needed better than that. A 9.775 for Amanda Castillo. Alabama's Morgan Dennis now on vault. This is one incredible athlete. Well, she has a huge Yurchenko full. She just needs to hit the landing. Oh. Wow. There's her dad, Al Dennis. He knows she stuck that landing. And a 9.90, and there's the overall Alabama vault number, 49.1. Now here's Utah's leader, Ashley Postel, ranked number one in the all-around coming in and anchoring the beam. Well, she knows how to handle pressure on this event. She was the 2002 world champion on this event. Beautiful, full twisting swing down. We mentioned she's number one in the all around coming into this competition because she can score nine, nine fives or better on all four of these events. Beautiful back handspring layout. She epitomizes the kind of focus that you really have to have in gymnastics, doesn't she? She does. The loud crowd, whatever else is going on, it does not affect her. That's the key to being great. This is a team competition, but individuals make the team score. That's right. you got to get up there and do your job. Comes the dismount. Round off, double full. Very nice. You can tell this really means a lot to her in her senior year at Utah. Well, here's another look at her series. We always say what makes somebody great at beam is staying on when they're not straight. However, she is dead straight. You can see right there as she lands this layout step out, helping her have not even a slight balance check. And a quality score for her and her team just over a 49 for Utah. And Florida's tough start on the bars winds up with their anchor, Melanie Sinclair, looking to really help out her team. She is tiny, but she is packed with huge gymnastic skills just like that. Beautiful release move. Right, giant full right to that ginger. Beautiful shoot to handstand. A lot of these skills we're going to see Every gymnast doing it's coming down to who nails their lines right up to that vertical position and who sticks their landings. Double layout. That's, there you as, go. that's as good as we've seen from Florida. They really had to have it. For the team, though, you'd have to look at the overall score and say that this was not what they bargained for on this apparatus. Already underway on floor exercise, senior Katie Heenan. You know, Amanda, I believe that with the loss of Courtney Coupet, she really took it upon herself more than any other gymnast to lead Suzanne Yachlin's team. Well, you know, it was a fear midway through the season to lose an athlete like Courtney Coupet, but they have really stepped up. And just on floor alone, the lowest score so far is a 9.85. They've already had two 9.9s ahead of Katie. We mentioned this is a great event for them to start out on. Katie's got a very entertaining floor routine. Not the typical music you'd hear at a college competition. Yeah, it has a bit more of an international flair to it, doesn't it? That's right. Last pass, double pike. I'll tell you what, Tim, they are not giving a single tenth away. No, they're not. Big band accompaniment for a big band approach for Katie Heenan and another standing O from the Jim Dog crowd, Suzanne Yachlin with a huge hug, 9.950. In fact, when you look at these numbers on Georgia and Florex, so good were they. Courtney McCool's anchor performance was really of no consequence. But Georgia does lead the way. Alabama is second. Florida, a tough start for them. And Alabama's Sarah Patterson is with Amanda. Sarah, you guys started on vault, one of your stronger events. I noticed a significant change in the lineup. Can you explain that to me? Well, I, I think we wanted to go with Kayla Hoffman third. Uh, Kayla has that uh, tendency to just stick that vault, and I thought it would elevate our team. She did. She was just a little forward. Um, we, we went with Cassie Price because we felt she was vaulting better in um, warm-ups, and I thought she did a great job of sticking her landing. So we're, we're excited.
Are you satisfied with that performance? And where are you looking as you go into the second event? Well, you know, I, I think um, no team is going to be absolutely perfect tonight. And, uh, you know, I think Morgan Dennis uh, just capped off six there. I had a great vault at the end. I, you know, I feel like this competition is, is going to be so close that it's going to come down to .025 of a point. And we're just excited to be here. I think our ladies are ready. And I think after the first event, we'll settle in a little bit more. Thank you very much. In rotation two, Stanford and LSU join the party. We'll be back. Are you ready? We're ready! Here we go! Girls, we have been dreaming about and preparing for this moment for a long time. I am so proud of this team. I'm so proud of who you are. This is a great team. Go out there and be who you are and do what you do. And remember, the team that has the most fun wins no matter what. <laughs> right? Are you ready? Kristen Smith is in her seventh year as head coach, and this is their second straight fourth overall Super 6 appearance. Every competitor is back from a season ago, and here's the second rotation. They open on bars. Georgia on vault with Florida on the beam, and LSU will open its first Super 6 with floor exercise. And here is Nicole Urata, a junior from Germantown, Wisconsin, who opens it up for Stanford on bars. Nicole is a beautiful gymnast. Starts the routine out with huge release moves. Right here, great height there. What stands out about her as an athlete, though, is her impeccable form. Got great extension, beautiful toe point. Winding up, double layout, very nice. She knows the importance of those landings. No question. A great start for Nicole Urata. 9.875. At long last, Dee Dee Bro, who began in 1977, makes it to the Super Six. She's been on the precipice of this event for many, many years. Finally, she's here. And they open on Floor X with senior Christy Esposito from Slidell. Very nice front layout to Rudy. She has scored a 9-8 or better on this event eight times this season. Beautiful turn and leap series. It's interesting when they use some of the fight song in the routine, you know? That's right. You know, this was my favorite event because you can let your personality show. You can see that coming out as she finishes her routine. The beautiful double tuck. Oh, a little point to the fan base. I got you. They've waited so long for this opportunity, and these kids are as happy for their coach as the coach could possibly be for the athletes. 9.80 for Christy Esposito. Now, Georgia's Marcia Newby, one of the unsung gym dogs, coming off a 995 vault in the prelims. She has a lot of power. Your Chenko Arabian. You see a step on that landing. Those blind landings, they can't see the ground before they hit it, so it's pretty tough to stick it. And this is one of the young guns we're talking about. 9.850 for Newby. Florida head coach Ron Fain. Last year, her number one ranked team faltered here at the Nationals, so she decided to ease up on her meet schedule this season to keep the Gators fresh in their hunt for a championship. It has felt like the, the smartest thing we have ever done uh, as far as keeping the athletes fresh. It wasn't as taxing on their bodies, uh, and also it, it really was just less hectic. You know, last year we had 13 meets, and that was just absolutely grueling. And this year we had two free weekends at the end of our season, which really, I think, uh, helped our athletes rest a little bit mentally and physically, and we feel that we are the freshest and the sharpest uh, that we've been. Let's see now if things brighten up now that they've moved to the beam, Amanda. Here's Melanie Sinclair, one of their leaders. Here's her tumbling series. Right to a gainer back handspring, layout, step out. Oh, man, that is not like her to be wobbling on this event. 
They have to feel the pressure. That's not the way you want to start. It gets the ball rolling, but now they're going to the toughest event and having to perform and step it up a notch. We've always considered the balance beam the make or break event. That's how we describe it. You really want to get up there and just hit six for six. Finishing with a round of double pike, step on the landing, but man, that's a tough dismount. I give them credit for, for throwing these tough skills. Here was the problem. Back handspring, full twisting back handspring. You can see that right arm dropped. It started right there. And then it was a domino effect as she went into the gainer back handspring, layout, step out. The entire right side of her body, you can yeah. see right hip, right leg, lifted off the beam, and she fought to stay on the beam, but still lost a good two to three tenths right there. No matter how great you are, confidence is really the measure on that particular apparatus, 9.70. And again, Florida finds themselves a bit behind the eight ball. Now over to the bars and Stanford's Liz Tricas. Tim, when I look at her, I just want to say power. Beautiful release up to the high bar. Straight back down with the shoot to hand, hitting that perfect vertical line. Senior from the state of Illinois. Another beautiful release move. All that's left is the dismount. Double layout. Very nice. Yeah, you know, she fought off some injuries just to get to this final. And a strong bars routine. 9.90. Oh, she did very well in the Pac 10s, as you know, and it seemingly has carried over. Now to the vault and Georgia's 2008 Freshman of the Year, Cassidy McComb. She's actually performing the toughest vault we'll see today. Your Chanko, one and a half. <laughs> wow, a lot of risk to that. It's not worth any more than the Yurchenko full. Both 10 0 starts, but. It paid off. I mean, they just keep bringing out freshmen that are incredible. <laughs> Another 9-9 for Georgia. Florida's uh, senior Ashley Reed from Davie, Florida, really needs a good score here. So far, she's been very solid on this routine. Beautiful flexibility, straddle jump, straddle jump. Very nice. Layout, step out. Dismounting with the round off double full. Another big hop. Florida knows the importance of these landings, and they're just not sticking them. Well, when you're trying to take on the big dog in their home gym, and you have to begin on bars and beam, that can be tough, and that's exactly so far what it's been for Florida. When we come back, we'll see how the veterans of this gym dogs team handle the momentum, and will Amanda Castillo be able to help Florida fight them off? We welcome you back to the NCAA Gymnastics Championships. There's a look at two-time defending all-around champion Courtney Coupets of Georgia. She tore Achilles in a meet back in early March, and she is sorely missed by the gym dogs. When I saw her go down, it was, it was devastating because, you know, she just represents everything great about college gymnastics. You know, to be at the top of her game on the Olympic team and then to win back-to-back -back NCAA titles, it's a tremendous loss for the gymnastics community to not have Courtney competing. Courtney is a very strong young lady who was able to give her strength to our team in other ways, and she's, you know, handled her injury as well as anyone could. Suzanne Yachlin's team has been challenged, and she issued it saying, you know, I don't know if we're the same team without Courtney Kupetz, but a year ago they rebounded Amanda losing sister Ashley Kupetz to the very same injury and Kelsey Erickson. Now Katie Heenan, one of the leaders, really helping this team take control without them. She has a big Yurchenko full. You can see digging in for that landing. What a huge opportunity this is for her. Her final performance, her dad, John, and mom, Lisa Heenan, looking on. A 9.875 for the Georgia leader. Now back over to the bar, Stanford's Tabitha Yim, the Pac-10 Gymnast of the Year. Tabitha won the all-around at the Pac-10. Very nice release combination right here at the beginning. Back down with the Pac Salto.
She's a very aggressive competitor. Finishing with the full twisting double back. Hey, Stanford's off to a quality start. Don't look now, but the Cardinal are making a move in this competition. 9.850 for Tabitha Yim. Back to the beam we go. We join Corey Hartung in progress. Very interesting. Shushanova back hip circle on the beam. It's not easy to do a back hip circle on something that's square. Once again, showing off her beautiful flexibility. Front aerial, single shows you exactly how wide that beam is, only four inches wide. You talk about the defining lines of gymnastics. Corey Hartung really personifies that, doesn't she? Beautiful, she was an elite gymnast and she really brings that to the collegiate field as well. She actually was a member of the 0304 US national team. Dismounting with a round off two and a half, little hot, but, but solid routine. Corey Hartung awaits her score for Florida, 9.80. Now, while she was on beam, here's LSU sophomore Susan Jackson, a first-team All-SEC gymnast. Very nice leap pass. Tim, you have to watch this move coming up. I don't recommend doing this at home. <laughs> right here. That's called a back head spring. Wow. <laughs> we usually don't recommend, you know, landing on your head. She does a very nice job of it, though. Very powerful tumbler, front double full, right to a pike front. She has really come into her own this year. She finished sixth in the all around at the SEC Conference Championship in 10. That's one of the toughest conferences when it comes to gymnastics. In fact, four of the six teams here are from the SEC. Comes that last tumbling pass. Beautiful double pike. She scored nine nines, and I'll tell you what, that's got to be close. DD Bro's got to be happy. Sometimes you've got to use your head to make your first super six. 9.875 for Susan Jackson. Back to the beam we go, and Amanda Castillo again with plenty of pressure for Florida. Here's her tumbling series, backhand spring layout, little bobble. You cannot help noticing, Amanda, she's the only competitor on beam that uses beam shoes. That's right, you don't see them very often anymore. Typically it's because the athlete wants a little extra padding and or they might have sweaty feet. Well, Gives maybe, them a better grip on this event. Maybe she's going old school on you. That's right. <laughs> Beautiful flexibility here on these straddle jumps. Amanda has a very difficult Dismount, and I'll tell you what, I have to say that I appreciate the difficulty Florida's performing along with the amount of risk they're taking. Round up, double pike. Those are tough dismounts to be sticking. Let's take another look at her series. Back handspring layout, two feet. You can see there again that right arm scooping down. It's just enough to take her off balance. So Florida will just have to fight from behind the rest of the way. Let's go back over to the vault. Tiffany Tolnay already on Flora 9-9 today. Performing Yurchenko one and a half. Little step there on that landing, but you know, she struggled with some fear on this event. Great performance. Overall, though, Georgia creating some distance between themselves and the competition, 49.225 on vault. While Amanda Castillo was on the beam, this is Ashley Claire Kearney and her floor exercise of LSU. It's her second tumbling pass, beautiful double pike. And watching this routine, I'd say this girl can dance. Oh yeah. Brings in a little attitude along with big gymnastics. Co-conference gymnast of the year, LSU's best. You know, I don't sense any nerves from these competitors from LSU. This is the first time they've ever been here. Well, they have nothing to lose. Get out here and do what you're great at and have a great time doing it. Finishing a routine out. 
the whip half right into a one and a half. And she knows. Yeah, I believe she brought it, <laughs> as they say. Ashley Claire Kearney leading the way for LSU with a 9.90. And overall, a quality score for LSU on the floor, 49.125. And as you look at the overall competition after rotation two, the two dark horses, Stanford and LSU, right in there. But if you look at the overall averages, Georgia has created some distance. Florida's struggles continue, and their coach, Ron Defane, is with Amanda. You started on the bars, not the way most coaches would want to. First routine out, fall. Can you tell me about the composure it took for your team to fight back on that event? Well, obviously, that's not the way we would definitely want to start because what it does is it puts the athletes already in a tight situation where they get a little bit tense. And, and you know, I think they, they handled themselves fairly well for sure um, we just discussed you know we're, we really have dug ourselves a little bit of a hole I don't know if we can get out um, we just need to really loosen up and we need to relax and, and have fun out there because the tighter we get the uh, harder it is to do well good luck to you and your team when we come back we'll have the third rotation after this message and a word from your local stations welcome back to Athens Georgia and now we've got a Super 6 history lesson. Schools with the most titles by decades. Uh, really a sport dominated by perennial powers when you think about it. Utah in the 80s got it rolling with five national championships. It continued into the decade of the 90s with four more for Greg Marsden. UCLA with dominant gymnast abound had four after the turn of the century. Well, they didn't make it to the Super Six this year, but they did not go home empty handed. Let's take a look now at the individual championships, beginning with Susan Jackson on the vault for LSU. Susan performed a Yurchenko full packed with power and a flawless landing. Jim dog Grace Taylor showed great skill, beautiful flexibility and perfection to earn her the 2008 beam title. Teammate Courtney McCool has been ranked number one on floor all season long, and she knew exactly what it would take to win the title. Big tumbling and perfect landings earned her her first NCAA individual championship. The Bruins not making the Super Six was surprising. However, senior Tasha Schweikert, despite a rough season, captured the uneven bar championship as well as the all-around title. This year has just been amazing. I've battled through a lot of pain and struggle with my Achilles and to end it this way it's just a dream come true I mean winning the NCAA all around for a second time and being the bars champion I couldn't ask for more we move now to rotation three Alabama will move to bars Utah will be on floor X Stanford is on the beam and LSU moves to the vault and Pennsylvania freshman Paige Cipollone one of the young guns on Didi Bro's team will get them going Starting it off with the Yurchenko full. Little off balance there to the right. Mom Stephanie looking on with a 9.725 for DD Bros Club. Over to the beam now where Stanford's Lauren Elmore goes to work. Solid leap pass. They really have to be feeding off the momentum they created on the uneven bars. And that's the position you want to be in as you come into the balance beam. Punch front, right to a wolf jump. Stanford has a very commanding presence on this event. In fact, Kristen Smith said that she feels like by the end of this season, this is their strongest event. Not many coaches can make that statement. Well, when it is the event that will make or break where you finish in this competition, that's what you want to be able to say. Oh, Beautiful. Yeah. Round of backhand spring double full. That's as good a dismount as we've seen today. And her score reflective 9.80 for Lauren Elmore. Oh, there's Alabama coach Sarah Patterson. Her team is here without one of their stars from the past. Taryn Humphrey, 2007 Bars champion, was forced to retire due to a back injury. Among those filling the void by her, young Casey Overton on Bars. Very nice, giant full, finishing it right on top to the Tkachev. Pack Salto, she actually struggled on that in the preliminary competition.
She winds up for the dismount, looking for a perfect landing, and she did it. Oh. And it's roll tide time in Athens. Casey Overton with a 9.80 for Alabama. Back to the vault we go. Sophomore Kayla Rogers of LSU. The judges have seen this vault all day long, the Urchenko full. So they're looking for a height off the table and landing. Ah, mm. You can see she's fighting for the landing, but that's a significant deduction when your chest is that low. And that score is not going to help their cause. So a little bit of pressure on LSU. Meanwhile, Utah's Daria Bijak has some trouble on Florence. Very difficult double front punch front. You can see on the double front, not enough rotation. Her hips went backwards, causing her to land really short on that landing. So now the Utes need some help from freshman Kendall Robarts. Whip right to double full. Very clean landing. Her coaches describe her as having a cat-like style to her dance. And she's actually a two-time Junior Olympic champion on this event. So if anybody can handle the pressure, Tim, it's Kendall. She's one of the more outgoing teammates, too, on this Utah team. <laughs> Catching her breath for the last tumbling pass. Double pike. She knew what to do, and she did it. I'd say that's a bit of a bounce back for the Utes. Grinning from ear to ear, Kendall Robards with a score of 9.825. That'll help their cause. When we come back, All-Americans Ashley Claire Kearney and number one all-arounder Ashley Postel show their stuff. Get complete coverage from all of the NCAA championships, including recaps and results from each event at the new NCAA.com, the official site of NCAA sports. We welcome you back, and here's Stanford's Tabitha Yim on beam, Amanda. She always has a game face especially on this event. She's very sharp and confident. Here comes beautiful Anoti. Oh. A little bit of a wobble there on that switch side. Pac-10 all-around champion Tabitha Yim. Very confident leap series, switch leap to straddle jump. There's that game face as she gets ready for her dismount. Round off double full, and she didn't even move those feet, letting the judges know you can't take a thing. Her mom, Inja, is uh, looking on proudly, and well, she should, 9.850. Back to the vault we go, LSU Susan Jackson, the 2008 Vault champion. You don't think she's going to use her head here, do you? <laughs> she is a huge Yurchenko full. Wow. That's, you know, that's really what, good. A little rebound, but I don't know what else the judges could find wrong with that vault. DD Bro, very happy with Susan Jackson's performance to this point. 9.925 for the LSU star on this apparatus. Alabama's Kaylee Hoffman now on bars. Freshman from Union, New Jersey. Mounting up to the high bar. Starting right off, giant full. Takachev. The bars are so wide now, Tim, that they can swing the other direction. Very nice save. She actually cast it over there, added it a giant half to that shoot to hand. You know you have a great athlete when they make a small error, but yet can still fix it and have a very strong comeback. Double layout, very nice routine. A uh, very good landing to close it. Her dad, Richard, mom, Helen Leggett, a 9.80. Already underway is one of Utah's veterans, Christina Basquette, on floor. She's 
such a fun gymnast to watch. She makes everything look so easy, and she's so confident. Yeah, she's smooth in every event. Beautiful leap series to a Shushanova. We talked about the podium on the balance beam. It makes it a little wobbly. However, on this event, the podium actually makes it a little bit easier. It adds a little bit of bounce to the floor, making this last tumbling pass a lot easier. Beautiful double pipe. Whoa. You can see she was right on the edge of that line. That would have been point one in a deduction, but she saved it. Really a veteran move to make sure that she located that, that left foot where she did. 9.850 for Basquet. Ashley Claire Kearney of LSU may be the top gymnast that they have. She's gonna be following a 9.925 on vault coming for Susan Jackson, but she's up to it. At the regionals earlier this year, she came up with a perfect 10, Amanda. Well, you know what? She's got so much height on this year Chenko Fold that she can actually spot the ground and drop it in. She doesn't give the judges one thing to take. That was just a few weeks ago. Now on the grandest stage and after getting LSU to a place where they've never been, and that would be the Super Six. Here she goes, her overall ranking number two in this event. Wow. <laughs> I'll tell you what, she did it again. A little more lean on the landing there. You can see great height, sees the landing. She's the kind of athlete you have to say, control your power. Yeah, and indeed she did. 9.925 equaling the score of Jackson. And again, LSU off to a very surprising start. Now, while Basquet was on the floor earlier, Heather Purnell of Stanford was on the beam. Very solid punch front. She moves right back into her tumbling series. Back handspring layout, step out. Gorgeous. Strong leap series. You know, once you get a few skills under your belt on this event, you can tell if they're confident and where the routine is going. One step ahead of the next move, huh? That's right. You always want to be concentrating on the skill that you're on, however, knowing where you're going in the routine, commanding your body, letting the judges know that this is your best event. Switch leap, right to a gainer full. Well, I tell you, this Stanford team is getting the job done. They're going to be in this all the way through. They know it, too. 9.85 for her, and their overall score, 49.175. Meanwhile, at bars, Cassie Price, who's won this competition in 10 of 13 meets this year, gets going. Beautiful Hindor showing great height and distance. Right to the low bar. Cassie has beautiful form in lines, locking out those handstands. Giant full. Right to a double layout. Wow. That's going to be a big score, and that's what the tight needs right now. Yeah, Alabama looking for an edge, and they get above 49 in the overall competition with her score of 9.90. You know, Amanda, there comes a time when we all have to admire greatness, and this is our last chance at doing that with Ashley Pustel, truly one of the best ever. Well, she has accomplished in just about everything. 29 career all-around wins. I mean, look at that. Not just a school record, but she's got marks that will live in NCAA history. 20-time All-America, the most you could ever have, and here she is on Florex. really enjoy watching her college career. You see these elite athletes move into that college position where it becomes team focused. But seeing them hold their elite level skills just really impresses me. I think in her case, she's always had added pressure because she knew what she was bringing to the table for Utah. Expects so much of herself. You're taking a deep breath. 
triple full. You don't see too many of those at the collegiate level, and not only did she perform it, she got it completely around. Hello, I'm pretty good, Ashley Postel. Her mom, Linda, loving it. A 9.95, and the overall numbers for Utah put them right in position as we approach the halfway mark. They love their role as underdogs, and so does Stanford, and look at that. Right on Georgia's heels after three rotations. And how about the performance of Dee Dee Bro's LSU team in their first ever Super Six? And she's standing by with our Amanda Borden. Ashley Claire Kearney struggled yesterday in prelims, really is stepping up for you today and your team. Tell me how they're handling the pressure. Well, we're making some mistakes early in the lineup, and, and you know, it's costing us. And then the end of the lineup is stepping up, so that's kind of balancing out. We need all cylinders to click here on the last two events. Can you tell me what being in the Super Six means to you individually as well as your girls? Well, you know, it's a goal. It's the only way you can get to the next level is to, to stop at this point and enjoy this. And you have to learn how to be here. And I think that I, my kids are handling it really well. And it means a lot to our university, and it means a, a lot, I think, to the, to the city and the state. So I'm just really excited to be able to represent LSU. Well, congratulations and good luck. We're halfway home here in Athens, Georgia. More of the 2008 NCAA Gymnastics Championships coming up. Georgia's had one thing on their mind all season. But Utah will do anything to get a championship back to where they think it belongs. And Stanford is rising to the occasion, eager to make their own mark as number one. Florida's troubled start means they have to be perfect to stop the gym dogs. Georgia's halfway to a title, and they won't give up at home. At the halfway mark, Amanda, to no one's surprise, Georgia very comfortable at home. Well, they are feeding off this crowd. They've had huge scores on floor and vault as they go into uneven bars and balance beam. And with Florida's missteps in the early rotations really open the floodgates for an upstart like LSU. They look very comfortable. And how about Stanford? They've been the biggest story. Very strong. Started on bars and balance beam. I think the two toughest events, they've gotten them out of the way. Now it's floor and vault. All fun. Utah is lurking. I mean, they're very bunched up, and this is an experienced team. You know, we mentioned it before. They're solid. However, they are heading into the event they're ranked number one on, and that is the vault. Yes, they are, and uh, Georgia will be on bars. Bama moves to the beam, and Stanford on floor exercise. LSU and Stanford each have buys. Georgia's Suzanne Yachlin does say that next year she will step down and uh, leave the keys to this engine to Jay Clark, who's been with her 16 years as the Jim Dodds associate head coach. And uh, now we head for the home stretch. One of the senior leaders, Nikki Childs from Plano, Texas on bars. Georgia is ranked number one on this event. Beautiful giant one and a half ginger between the bars. Right back down with a pack salto. She finishes this routine with a giant full to the double tuck. Looking to be right on top there. Very nice. Spotted that landing and nailed it. Outstanding. We may be leading the country in standing ovations in one event today. <laughs> Nikki Childs at 9.850. Over to Utah's Daria Bijak on the vault. We haven't seen this type of vault in this competition. Handspring front layout. This new table, it takes a tremendous amount of power to do that kind of vault. Greg Marsden's team keeps on keeping on 9.85 for Bijak. Now the Florida Gators need to begin to mount a comeback here on floor exercise. Ashley Reed gets things going. Double pipe. You can see her landing on a mat. That is allowed. However, they do have to stay in bounds. And something we're going to see all of the Gators do right there, the Gator Chomp. Every one of them has that in their floor routine which raises the ire of, uh, I believe, the home team a little. <laughs> <laughs> Very creative floor work. It's probably my favorite event to watch at the college level because they really learn how to dance. And of course, they all have the big tumbling. Finishing it out with the front layout front full. 
Hey, I remember your Florex. You've always been partial to floor exercise. Ashley Reed with a quality performance for Florida as they try to mount the comeback after that difficult start on bars and beam. A 9.850 for her. Now, while Reed was on the floor performing, Alabama's Ashley O'Neill is trying to keep uh, her concentration on the beam. Switch leap, straddle jump. A little bit of a balance check. Beautiful punch front. Ashley has a very difficult dismount, one we don't see very often, a double front off the end. Oh, a little short there. Yeah, what a shame, too, because up until then, it had really been a good, solid performance. Let's take another look. Very difficult, can't see the ground, just not enough height, and you can see when she lands, her hips are totally behind her feet. And of course, that is a fall. A major deduction. 9.225, so Bama can ill afford another bobble of any kind. Now let's go over to the vault and Kendall Robarts. Another unique vault for Utah. Yurchenko half on, Pike front off, and that is why they are ranked number one on this event. They stick those landings. Of course, the fans like that. 9.875 for Robarts. Cassidy McComb, we've already seen her earlier today, very successful. This uh, freshman is uh, just tremendous. Here she is on bars. She scored nothing less than a 9-9 so far. She opens up with a beautiful Takachev. Giant full shoot over right to the handstand. Winding it up. Finishing with a full twisting double back and a beautiful landing. I mean, is it any wonder why this team is in the position they're in? They continue to recruit athletes like this. Another 9.90 for the freshman. When we return, the Gym Dogs look to keep their lead on the bars. Tune in to College Sports Tonight for the best way to get College Sports Today. Get inside the latest news, scores, highlights, and more only on the CBS College Sports Network, the new pulse of college sports. Welcome back to Athens, Georgia, and the NCAA Gymnastics Championships. Here's a look at Utah coach Greg Marsden. His team is here every year. They hold the record for the most appearances at nationals. The last title coming in 95, but look at this dominance for such a long period of time. His team is trailing today, and uh, they continue on vault with sophomore Annie Deluzio from Folsom, California. Now, she was the national runner-up last year on this apparatus. Yurchenko full. Quite a big hop there on that landing. Yeah, she knows it. 9.850. Good score, though, for Deluzio. Now we go over to Courtney McCool for another former Olympian to go to work on bars for Georgia. She has a beautiful bar routine. Starting it right out. The Tukachev. Coming right back with a release to the low bar. Shoot over to handstand. Tim, she has the most difficult dismount in this competition as she winds up is a full twisting double layout. Perfect. Oh, wow. ab absolutely. <laughs> They're calling the dogs here at Stegman Coliseum. Let's take another look at it. You'll see she gets a great wind up, but she releases at a perfect time. You can see her momentum curving up as well as getting her enough rotation. With the body in that layout shape, it's very difficult to pull it all the way around and drop it in for a perfect landing. I mean, if these scores continue for Georgia, I mean, we're talking about a coronation potentially. 9.925 as they continue to extend their lead. Now we go back over to the beam. Bama's Cassie Price is at work. 
Run aerial. Oh. Oh, this is really gonna hurt. It's a very difficult skill. Again, you can't see the beam before that foot lands. And you can tell she had no chance there. Well, remember after O'Neill's tumble and an earlier 9.225, that's basically gonna leave Alabama out of it. Came back with a solid tumbling series. the hardest thing in the world to do isn't it after you know you've you, you're really out of it that you still have to finish the routine and in this situation you also have your teammates counting on you too they had such high expectations coming in at Alabama having performed so well in the latter half of the year even without Taryn Humphrey beautiful kick over front I'll tell you what this has been a flawless routine besides that one mistake O'Neill had the 9.225, so this score will have to count. Round off double back. I'll tell you what, packed routine though. Yeah, it was. Let's take another look here on the front area. You can see her body is totally to the right. That left foot lands completely off the beam. She had no shot to save that. Those great expectations, once they go away, that's tough. Cassie Price is scoring, they'll have to count at 9.250. Leaves Alabama out of this competition. Now to Christina Basquet. She's had solid performances in this competition. Yurchenko full, beautiful. I mean, they, they just won't go away, Utah. <laughs> it's as if they know that this is a marathon, not a sprint. 9.875. Offering the greatest challenge to Georgia, it appears. Tiffany Tolnay. Now for the Gym Dogs on bars. Very nice, Jaeger. Wow. You don't see too many athletes hold the handstand on the bar. That's what separates those 9.8s to the 9.9s. Giant fold, giant blind, right to a double front. They keep doing it. Yeah. Nail every landing. And a uh, rather, oh, I don't know, pedestrian 9.875 for Georgia. Let's go to Florida's Melanie Sinclair trying to bring the Gators back on floor. Front layout, front full. She is a tiny gymnast, but she really stands out on this event. She has so much personality. A little bit of attitude, I would say. Yeah, maybe the, the greatest of attitudes. And at this point, Florida has nothing to lose. They need to get out here and have a good time. This is a great event to do that on. Pick back their momentum up. Yeah, and at this stage, you know as a team, they have to feel they're out of it, but it doesn't appear to have any effect on Melody Sinclair. Well, and they still have a job to do. Two more events to finish up. Beautiful double pike. Whoa. <laughs> and there's that chomp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Melody Sinclair, the future is now. Her family knows it, and uh, so do her teammates. And Rhonda Fain gives her a big hug, a 9.90 for Sinclair. Over to Ashley Postel. She's only number one in the country on vault. Performing Irchenko full. Wow. <laughs> what a day she is having. I'll tell you what, another near perfect performance. Here it is, beautiful height, perfect form, spots the landing and doesn't move. A 9.95 for Postel, and uh, Utah keeps on creeping up in this competition. But it's Georgia that's got all of the momentum towards a fourth straight national championship. This is Grace Taylor while Sinclair was on the floor. Hops her hands. Beautiful front stalled her right back down to the low bar. Shoot to handstand. Very impressive stalled her combinations. 
Woo! That's the common each. You don't see that too often anymore. Named after Nadia, of course. Both she and Bart are glad you mentioned that. Double layout, small step there, but beautiful routine. Another great score, 9.825 for Grace Taylor. Now, Florida may not have a shot at the national title, but they're moving up on the floor, and here's Amanda Castillo to prove her point. And like Sinclair, Amanda also has a lot of personality. We've seen Florida make a lot of leaps and jumps as a team, and I do think that Amanda brings a lot of that, oh, a lot yeah. of confidence, really leading the team. She and Sinclair are both sophomores, and uh, I don't know that anyone knew they wanted to be a Gator before Amanda Castillo did. <laughs> That's right. She knew as a little girl this is where she wanted to be. Finishing the routine out with a double pike. We talked about it. They have the leadership, but they also bring the big scores for the Gators. Outstanding work by Amanda Castillo. And the crowd from Florida, her mom Maria, very happy. So are the teammates at 9.925. Florida keeps creeping up. Overall, after four rotations, Georgia with the lead. Utah on their heels, and when you do the total averaging, after the vault performance by Utah, they're right there, and uh, Greg Marsden's with Amanda. You guys look phenomenal out there. There's a lot of energy. How are you feeling about their performance so far? You know, I feel great. I, I, I you know, Beam's a tough place to start, and of course, George is on floor, and the crowd's going crazy. Uh, and I thought we were a little tight in the beginning, but we've loosened up, and I think each event we've gotten stronger and stronger. Uh, vault was just, we rocked vault. It was just great. Well, Christina and Ashley posting huge scores for you today. Can they carry you through to bars and finish this out? Well, I hope so. I, I, you know, we've got to go sit through a bye now and, and uh, kind of relax and then get, then get ourselves together and uh, come out, hit handstands and stick dismounts. That's what it's about. Thank you very much. All right, when we come back, Georgia looks to lock up their fourth straight national title after this message and a word from your local station. Just there, you saw Suzanne Yachlin telling her team, this is your destiny. She's talking about focus with them, Amanda, yet she's always thinking big picture. What a program. And it seems the key to this great program is having a superstar at every grade level, which, once again, they have that this year. Absolutely, and her team uh, ranked first in the country. On beam will be there for rotation five, their last. Florida on vault, LSU bars, Stanford floor exercise. And to get the gym dog started on the beam, here's another talented freshman, Hillary Morrow from Boston, Massachusetts. This position is the most important position of the competition, the lead off on this event. A hit gets the momentum rolling, a miss creates a lot of pressure, especially when it's the last event. Very nice, punch front. I believe Hillary is the tiniest college gymnast here at a whopping 4'7", although she claims 4'8". She grew an inch <laughs> since she's been here in Athens. So they'll uh, cheat a little bit on those brochures and gymnastics <laughs> right. too, huh? That's right. She just needs to nail this dismount. Round up double full. Bingo. There it is. Great start. That's what they needed. There's her dad, Dan. Very excited, getting a few high fives himself while his daughter gets a hug and a 9.80 just for starters on beam. Now it's Lauren Elmore of Stanford Floor Exercise. She has specialized on the balance beam and floor exercise. Now they're still in this competition. Right on the heels of Utah, who are num number two right now. Very nice front tumbling pass. Her highest score on this event this season is a 9.9. .9.
they've really acquitted themselves as a team so well when you think about it, Amanda. Only one Pac-10 team in the Super Six. That usually doesn't happen. Here comes that last tumbling pass. Finishing with a two and a half punch front. And a little Superman move there. No kryptonite needed. Stanford's Lauren Elmore with another quality performance. She's had many of them today. 9.825 her score. And we'll go over to the bars where another talented freshman from LSU, this is Stacy Schwitkus from San Diego, ready to go. I have been so impressed with LSU. They have a very young team, and they have really stepped up under the pressure. Very nice shoot to handstand, nailing that vertical line. Finishing the routine with a full twisting double back. Absolutely. Just what D.D. Bro needed and the contingent from the Bayou. Schwitkus comes away with a 9.850. Already underway on the beam, senior Nikki Childs of Georgia. Starting her out with the switch ring there. Very difficult to take your eyes off of the balance beam. Solid front aerial. You know, Tim, some athletes are known for particular skills that get named after them. However, Nikki is known for this move right here. It is the moonwalk <laughs> on the beam, and you can hear the crowd goes wild for that. Little Michael Jackson yeah, moves little, in there. Yeah, the, a little finger snapping going on as well there. Comes the dismount. Backhands from Gainer full off the side. Yeah, no need for a glove. She's an original. Nikki Childs of Georgia. <laughs> Her last opportunity to compete before her home crowd. And the senior comes away with a 9.850 on beam. Now Melanie Sinclair on vault for Florida. Your chank go full. Beautiful, and she knows it. <laughs> you gotta love that energy. It's a 9.90. They're building for the future at Florida. It's going to be too little too late in this championship. Back over to the beam we go. Tiffany Tolnay. What a day she's had in all of the events. Punch front. At this point, Tim, they just need to hit their routines. It's got to be a comfortable feeling knowing that if you just uh, routinely go through what you're supposed to, you're going to win the national championship. Well, when talking to some of their coaches, they trained this event with the attitude of, we need six nine nines or better. Putting the pressure on in practice helps them handle this pressure. Two back handsprings to a double tuck. Little step, but good enough. Yeah, I mean, regardless, it's going to be a quality score. Maybe not a 9-9, nine -nine, but... Her teammates have certainly picked her up. That's a 9.750 for Tiffany Tolnay. When we come back, Georgia looks to lock up the national championship and add a little more hardware to their trophy case. Back here at Stegman Coliseum, a look at all the championships the Georgia Gym Dogs have won. Winning four in a row would be an amazing accomplishment for this team. Our seniors have an opportunity to compete for four in a row, and on top of that, to do it right here at home. The pressure that's there is really on the outside. People saying, you know, you've got to win four, you're going to win four. But for us, each year is a new team, and we really look at it like that, and this team has never won a championship before. As you look at Suzanne Yachlin, you can see the anxiety. She knows her team could win another national championship if there are no major missteps Along the way, here's Grace Taylor on beam. Beautiful leap series. And watch this, Tim. This is worth nothing. But I'll tell you what, the crowd appreciates it, and it shows off her flexibility. 
She won the individual title on this apparatus. Beautiful turn with the leg extended. Something that stands out about Grace is she has great dance and extension through her legs. Front aerial with that blind landing and not even a balance check. To have been a freshman on the team that won in Salt Lake has to mean a lot. I mean, you're older than a sophomore in this situation if you have to compete for Georgia. Finishing it out with two back handsprings to a double full. Another magnificent performance. Crowd wants a 10 for Grace Taylor and mom and dad, Lynn and Daniel, with a nice celebratory kiss and a 9.875 for their daughter. Now let's go over to the vault and Ashley Reed for the Florida Gators. Performing the risky Yurchenko one and a half. And it paid off, I'll tell you what, huge vault. Well, you've got to be impressed with the way they've come back in this competition. Ashley with a 9.950 and 49.40 for Florida on vault. Now the floor exercise, Tabitha Yim, the outstanding veteran star of the Stanford team. We talked about her intensity. I love seeing her smile on this event, see a little bit of her personality. Says a lot when you've got um, a conference that includes an all-around champion at UCLA like Schweikert that you are the gymnast of the year in the Pac-10, which Tabitha is. Well, they had a phenomenal performance at the Pac-10 conference championship leading to this competition. Finishing her routine out with a round off one and a half front full and a very nice landing. And she looks relieved. Yeah. <laughs> Stanford has really looked good in this national championship. And Tabitha's had a lot to do with it. A 9.90 for her. Well, Katie Heenan, a leader of this Georgia team on beam at a 9.95 in the prelims. This is her last routine as a gym dog. Means so much to her as well as this program. All she needs to do, Tim, is hit this routine that will ensure five solid scores for the gym dogs, which will make their lead almost insurmountable. Beautiful flight series. as if she knows this is her last chance to be a star in front of this crowd. Oh, yeah. No question. To think that you'd win a national championship in every year you competed. That's what's in front of her. Finishing it out. Round off. Double full. <laughs> wow. Tim, I didn't think there was a single thing wrong, and it is not too often that I say a routine deserves a 10, and I'll tell you what. That, that's pretty close. Look, if not for a 10, it still means probably a national championship. She may have just sewn it up. If the score is what we anticipated being, this lead is probably not one that can be caught. 9.950. It would take a Herculean effort for anyone to catch the gym dogs. And look at her excitement. She knows she clenched it, but more importantly, what a way to go out your senior year. Meanwhile, Ashley Claire Kearney who's been outstanding throughout her career, now on bars for LSU. This was going on while Heenan was on the beam. She anchors for LSU on every event. Because of that, she is dynamic, and she can get big scores. LSU is still in the race for second, and uh, for at this stage of their program, what? how much would that mean? Well, finishing it out right there. Beautiful huh? dismount. What an incredible day Ashley has had. Fantastic performance by Ashley Claire Kearney. She was concerned in the prelims about her efforts and whether they'd make it this far. They did, and she's come up big on bars, 9.904 and 49.20 as a team. Back to the beam. Courtney McCool with, uh, I guess, the cherry on top. That's right. Pressure is off. Get out there. Have a good time. 
Courtney, still very competitive, will do everything she can to post another huge score for the Gym Dogs. It's a very similar experience in Atlanta for our team because it is hometown crowd. When they're on the beam, it's pretty quiet. When they land, crowd goes wild. Yeah, back in 96, you remember that, right? That's right. Here it goes, the last landing of the day for the Gym Dogs, round off, double full. <laughs> and they did it again, and Suzanne knows it too. There's her father, Mike McCool. <laughs> and like the fans and the rest of this Georgia team, I think they know that this isn't a championship, it's more of a coronation. Look at that, yet another 9.90 for Courtney McCool in Georgia. And the Gym Dogs now have put themselves in a position where truly they have built an insurmountable lead, one would think. Look at that score after rotation five, 197.450. And the race for second includes Utah, Stanford, and LSU when we return. Welcome back to Athens, Georgia. It does look a little bit like a, a curtain call or coronation for Georgia as they sit out here in the sixth rotation awaiting a national championship for the fourth straight time. Utah, Stanford, and LSU would need multiple tens in their final rotation to have a chance at catching the Gym Dogs. And Kristen Smith's team has really acquitted itself beautifully. And here in the final rotation, Stephanie Gentry, senior from Plano, Texas, will get things started. Yurchenko full. Big step there on the landing. And you know, it's at this point, Stanford needs to be sticking every landing. And her vault garners a 9.750. Utah's Jessica Duke from Sandy, Utah. Another senior, her final performance on bars. Like Coach Martin said earlier, they've got to hit these handstands and stick their landings. Beautiful ginger. Moving right down to the low bar with a shoot to handstand. Mathematically, Utah would need an average of 9.935 in this competition to well, catch Georgia. That's pretty tough to do, but it will come down to the landings. And right there, that hop will take it from a 9.9 down to that 9.8 range. That being said, though, this contingent has got to be proud. This could be the third straight year Utah finishes second in this competition. A 9.80 for Jessica Du. And here's Susan Jackson now on the beam. And she needs some perfection right here. Well, she has really stepped up. She's only a sophomore. Well, this team for DD Bro, you talk about youth movement. This is a very young squad. You know, and this has to build their confidence. That way they can start focusing on next year. Hopefully to see them back in the Super Six again. Beautiful punch front. Well, your conversation with Dee Dee Bro said it all. I mean, you've got to get here to become comfortable in trying to win here. Well, I'll tell you what, their confidence today, I know she said they've had some mistakes, but they have really stepped up and put up five great scores on all four events. Finishing with round of double tuck. They've got the big skills. It's just going to be pulling out those big numbers. 9.80 for Susan Jackson of LSU. Back over to the vault now, Carly Janiga of Stanford. Another Yurchenko full. Fighting for that landing. They know they have to stick those. Yeah. She felt pretty good about it. And her score, only a 9.775. So these big scores that we were anticipating to try to catch Georgia simply aren't happening right now. Nina Kim now for Utah on the bars. Beautiful cast handstand. Right to toe handstand. Very nice form on the Takachev.
The Utes doing exactly what they talked about, hitting those handstands, and of course, winding up for the dismount. Full twisting double back. Small hop, but yeah. pretty good routine. Yeah, but those big scores that they needed simply haven't happened and really should assure Georgia the national championship. A 9.80 for Nina Kim. And Suzanne Yachlin knows it. So does her team. This is rarefied air. No other team has ever accomplished this other than Utah. We will finish out the competition when we come back. The Georgia celebration is on. Katie Heenan and uh, Nikki Childs, two of the seniors, their last opportunity to compete with one another. A magnificent championship is theirs. Jay Clark will soon take over the reins in another year for Suzanne Yachlin. Look at that. Unbelievable to think that uh, Georgia has a chance to join this kind of company. And it is rarefied air. Only Utah has won four in a row. And for Dee Dee Bro, who's trying to get there, her team was in the chase for number two, but ultimately it was the beam that did them in. Well, Nicole Lyons first on this front aerial had a major wobble. Stayed on, but that put a lot of pressure on the rest of the team. And here, Christy Esposito on her tumbling series. Completely crooked out of that layout step out and of course major fall. Greg Marsden's team is uh, in the hunt for second for the third consecutive year along with Stanford. It's a two team race now. And here is Daria Bijak now on bar. Starting out with the release move right up to the high bar. Hop full, beautiful release move. They're just nailing those vertical lines. Almost pointing it out to the judges. I mean, in any other competition, you could say Utah might be winning a national championship. I mean, their numbers have been great. And those landings have been great. Huge score right there. Don't say second doesn't mean anything, right? A 9.90 for Daria Bijak. And she is pumped. <laughs> and now over to uh, Tabitha Yim on vault. The judges have their focus on the landing. Yurchenko one and a half, beautiful vault, but there was a slight hop. Good, but not great for Tabitha Yim. She needed a score up in the nine nines, and it's a 9.85. Which means if Christina Basquet of Utah can score better than a 9.85, she'll clinch second for Utah for the third straight year in this championship. Well, they are on a great roll on this event. She has beautiful form. Very nice to catch up right to a pack salto. Back up to the high bar. Dismounting. I think she did it. Yeah, I, I think she did it. I think she knows it. So does uh, Randy and Jean, mom and dad, watching from above. There it is, a 9.90 for Christina Basquet. Second place for Utah yet again. And for Stanford, here's Liz Tricas. She has a huge vault. Yurchenko full. A little bit of a rebound, but a great finish for Stanford. One last look for Dad Pino and Mom Sheila. And for Stanford, a quality performance as a team and a 9.925 on the vault for Liz Twickhouse. And uh, one more look for us at Ashley Postel, one of the all-time greats in collegiate gymnastics on the bars. Well, she's had a phenomenal day today, finishing her senior year out. She's also being inducted to the USA Gymnastics Hall of Fame, and you can see why. She's a beautiful gymnast. And really, I think, puts as much pressure on herself as any competitor we've ever seen. Well, that's why she gets 9.9s nine and 9.95s. Nine Finishing it out with a double front and another perfect landing. Amanda, I don't know that we've ever seen her smile as much as we have in this competition. <laughs> I think you're right. What a remarkable performance today. A 9.950 for Ashley Postel. Another second place finish for the Utes. But the title, yet again, belongs to the Georgia Gym Dogs. 
And when we come back, their celebration rolls on. CBS Sports presentation of the NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championships is sponsored by the first ever G8 from Pontiac, the official performance machine of the NCAA. Coca-Cola Zero, real Coke taste and zero calories. And by State Farm, where great coverage meets great rates. Call, click, or visit and start saving today. We welcome you back to Stegman Coliseum here in Athens, Georgia. And as fantastic as Georgia's performance was, the scoring for the rest of the competition was truly remarkable today. And the champions are standing by with our Amanda Borden right now. Congratulations, Suzanne. Four titles in a row. What does it mean to do that in front of your hometown crowd? It's something I've always wanted since 1989. In 1989, we were ranked fifth and had no idea what we were doing and just happened to win. This time, I think we knew, knew what we were doing, or at least they did. They were really just terrific tonight. Well, you have nine titles now. That ties you for the lead. What does that mean? How have you created this powerhouse for Georgia? Well, you know, it's just a combination of so many people. We have so many people all surrounding our program that, program that are very passionate about what, what we do. And all of the girls on our team are very committed to the way we do things, and they're very confident in the system and the program. And, and that kind of confidence is what gives you the success that we've had. And Katie Heenan, you are a senior leader to this team, but there were a lot of people that contributed. This meet was a team effort all the way through. The journey started back in the fall, um, back in 05, even when these seniors stepped on this campus. It was a storybook, and we ended with a fairy tale ending. And that Beamer team, you nailed it. What did it feel like to know you clenched it? Such a good feeling. Hometown crowd, stuck landing, team behind me all the way. This team is amazing. Well, congratulations, Jim Dogs. All right, Amanda, we witnessed some history here in Athens, a fourth straight title. Now coming up next, 16 USBA and US Open champions roll for big bucks at bowling's Clash of Champions. So for Amanda Borden, I'm Tim Brando saying so long from Athens, and we leave you with sights and sounds of the competition where the Gym Dogs did it yet again.